Welcome to the Impact Multiplier CEO podcast. If you're a chief executive, or if you think like one, and you want to create exponentially greater impact, then this show is for you. My name is Richard Metcalf, founder of X Quadrant. I coach some of the most successful and impressive CEOs and executive teams on the planet and help them achieve extraordinary results. And no matter how successful you've been in the past, there's always a whole new level of impact available to you. So if you're ready to play a bigger game than ever before, I invite you to join us and become an Impact Multiplier CEO. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to um, the Impact Multiplier CEO podcast. I'm Davina Stanley, and I'm here with Richard as usual, and um, continuing this season on questions to multiply your impact. And these are really powerful questions that every CEO, entrepreneur, or senior business leader really should reflect on and um, engaging with them fully. And I think you'll find they'll um, provoke deeper thinking and shift you into a new realm of possibility. Hi, Richard. How are you? Hi, Davina. I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, it's early morning. I'm ready to go for the day and looking forward to jumping into uh, another of these big questions, which I know the one today might uh, scare you a little bit, which I'm looking forward to. (laughs) (laughs) I think you like making me feel uncomfortable, actually, Richard. I do. I do. It's part of the fun of the whole podcast. Yes, exactly. So dive in. Tell us, what's your question? What's your question for today? The question today is, what's your 25-year vision? Ah, okay. Well, tell us, tell us more about that. Why is that important? Well, I think it's, so your 25-year vision, it, it sounds scary and it sounds like a recipe for procrastination, right? Oh my God, I've got to be, got to invent my life story, right? What, what's it going to be? But, you know, here's the thing. I see time and time again, uh, people who are super focused, super busy, you know, working flat out, uh, moving forward, but they don't have a North Star. And so it's really hard for them to choose amongst all the options and possibilities ahead of them because they don't really know what they're trying to build. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was talking with a a friend and uh, and colleague of mine, uh, Adam, and um, he's a a fantastic... um, business uh, professional. He works uh, at a large professional services company, he works in the public sector, uh, working for governments and helping them you know, rebuild infrastructure and government departments and whatever else it is. And I was talking with him and he said, yeah, he's pretty happy. You know, he enjoys his job, right? He feels he's making a difference. He feels he's contributing. Um, so everything was going pretty well. And, um, but I, I kind of sense that he was happy, but he was not like on fire necessarily. So I was kind of pushing him a bit and said, well, what would you love to do? You know, what would really bring a silly grin to your face? You know, what feels embarrassing to tell me, but would be awesome if it happened? And uh, he said, well, you know, Richard, I'd never, I'd never vote for Scottish independence. But if it happened, ah, you know, I'd love to be part of rebuilding the new Scotland you know, the future Scotland, you know, uh, mm. making us better to play on the world stage and, and all the rest of it. And he started to think, about, well, what would that look like? Well, you know, I think we need to have leadership academies, you know, in, in the different, you know, towns around the place to really open people up to new ways of working or, how, you know, how to create value or whatever it was. Okay, so he started to kind of have some ideas, decided to come out of him. And he was starting to get that embarrassed grin, right? Because it sounded fantastic uh, to him. Yet it just sounded so big. How would it even start? Yes. And, and so I said to him, actually, well, perhaps you don't have to wait for a potential Scottish independence vote to start doing that, right? This, you could start doing it tomorrow. Mm. And so this, this is an idea, of a sense of a 25-year vision, right? It, it speaks to the impact that you might love to create in mm. your life you know one of the ways I ask I like to ask it is you sit you know you have your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren sitting on your lap when you're age 90 you know what would you love to tell them about the difference that you made in the world obviously most of us would want to talk about our families and hopefully how we've been a good parent and whatever else it is right but 
when the kids say, well, what did you do, you know, with your nine to five, right? With your working day, you know, what, what, what was the difference that you made? It's just great to think about, well, what would be awesome? And, and then start to live into that story. Yeah. So um, what's a 25 year vision? The great thing about a 25 year vision is it takes off all the pressure. It's 25 years away. Think where you were 25 years ago and what you were doing. It was completely different, right? So it takes the pressure off. If you have a 25 year vision, you only need to achieve 1% of it every quarter for 25 years. <laughs> Of and course, you you've broken it. it down like that. Of course, you have. That's and we're talking about impact multiplication, right? So if we're talking about exponential growth, then actually probably for the first few years, you're doing 0.1% of that vision. Yes. You're, okay. you're just building one relationship. You are um, attending one event. You know, you're just making a tiny move in that direction. Yeah. Um, so, so this is why, this it, is why I think it's, it's a great question. It sets you on fire. So, Richard, you, you're suggesting we should all have one of these, these visions. What's yours? Yeah, what's mine? So I'm not prepared, even though obviously I could have prepared, but I wanted to kind of be in the moment. And I'll tell you, so this is a question I have thought about. Um, as I said, when I, when I left... Um, Cisco, one of my drivers for setting up by myself was thinking, yeah, I don't want to just tell my grandchildren that I helped increase, you know, AT&T's EBITDA margin by 0.5% or something. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Uh, I love creating results. I love helping my clients, you know, achieve financial results, mm. other things, other sorts of results. But for mm. me, that's not the story that I want to tell them, right? Yeah. So then that started to get me onto what is it that I would love to create? Mm. Um, and so for me, there's a couple of, a couple of ideas and, and they're, they're not totally crystallized and they're going to probably change. But one of them would be, I have a concept called the X-Quadrant Presidents Club. I, mean, I don't even know kind of what it means, but it's this idea of build, bringing community together mm-hmm. of top world leaders mm-hmm. who have a real ability to impact and create waves you know, of a Mm -hmm. huge scale across the world. Mm -hmm. And through that community, you know, through my contribution to them and through their own Mm -hmm. community, you know, able to make massive positive change in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of one one aspect of it. So Mm -hmm. um, it's vague. I haven't written out a a detailed description. It's an all star, right? Um, You've got a picture in your head though. But yeah, it pictures me there. Mm -hmm. So when I'm meeting somebody thinking well you know are they going to be an ex quadrant presidents club right is that you know um or if i'm building a, a service or a product when i'm developing myself it, it's kind of with that in mind and here's another one and i've never talked to anybody about this publicly not because of um embarrassment but i just said i don't use it as a marketing strategy or anything i don't even know what it means and it's one of these ones which is a bit embarrassing um because but it sounds cool to me, which is um, to start a love revolution in tech. Sounds really hippie. Oh my word! What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. But I tell you, I was working with I was working um, with somebody at a conference, and we had to kind of like go on a bit of a rant about what we were all, what we wanted to stand for, what we you know, and what we wanted to create. And this just kind of came out this phrase as I was kind of improvising and riffing. And there's something in that, right? Because, yeah, I believe, you know, that tech, which is obviously my sector, it's where I've kind of spent most of my career, has this massive impact, you know, on the world and is really mm. shaping the, the future of the world. And tech yeah. companies have all this power. And, you know, f- um, it's so important, therefore, for the leadership of those companies to be fighting yes. for the highest possible good of their teams of, yes. and, but also of, of society, yeah and to be yep. driven by that sense of contribution mm-hmm. rather than purely by mm. how do i make a quick buck again yep. i'm all happy for entrepreneurs or whatever it is to make their money and all the rest of it it's all fine oh yeah but um it's more than that right it has to be more about the mm. more than the money and about uh creating yeah love right making making mm, the world a better mm. place and mm, so for me mm. again it's it's kind of a it's it's very vague. Other people might have very much more detailed 25 year vision. Mm, so I'm trying mm. to take the pressure off here by giving you quite vague answers. Some people might say, you know, I want to create this thing and I want to build a business like this with this many people. And 
it's great if you have that le le level of clarity. But for me, it's that North Star that allows you to kind of filter mm -hmm. everything by, mm. is this what I'm all about or not? Yeah, yeah. So let me, let me turn the tables. <laughs> there is a table for you, Dav. I knew uh, you've not even that. seen this question until today. No, so, I saw it like 15 minutes ago. And so. Yeah, so what comes to mind? What comes to mind? I'm not expecting you to have a fully fleshed answer, but, you know, what would say, so what would bring a silly grin to your face? What feels impossible, but extremely exciting? Hello, it's Richard here with a quick interlude. These conversations are all about upgrading how you think about creating impact. So here's a resource to help you do just that whilst staying fast and focused. The CEO's checklist for challenging times is a quick way to enhance your thinking and detect blind spots, even when things are moving incredibly fast and you're not sure what's going to happen next. You can get this powerful checklist of 17 world-class strategies by heading to xquadrant.com forward slash go forward slash challenging times checklist with a hyphen between each of those three last words. Now, back to the conversation. Yeah. And my flippant answer to you before we started was that in 25 years, I'd like to be alive and healthy. And um, that's sort of quite genuinely true. Um, well, actually, let me pause you on that. It, it, it is important, it pause you, because a lot of people self-limit on the 25-year mm. vision for many reasons. Let me just mm. quickly give you a couple of those. One of them is that it feels, oh, I've got to define it all now. No, you mm. don't. You come up with a rough draft yeah. and you can change it, edit it. It's going to evolve, mm. right? Mm. But at least you know as you sail out of the harbour, mm. roughly which direction you're going to pull <laughs> your boat, right? You might then decide, you know, and there'll be diversions and the storms will come and you'll have to yeah. go and repair your boat or whatever it is. Yeah, and but, yeah, and yeah. you might realise, actually, I don't want to go that way. I want to go over there to that, that headland and you can change course. So the yeah. first, that's part of it. But the other one is, especially for people who have just kind of like left their corporate career, they're often like, you know, I can't, I think I'm just going to dabble. I'm just going to play golf because... You know, I need to spend time with my family. I need to watch out for my health. But these are people who are not 90. These are people who are like 55 or something, right? And and the point is, you've got all this stuff to contribute. You've got the relationships. You've yeah. got the talents. You've got the resources. Yes. But what if you could do something exponentially greater, more yes. impactful, without the sacrifices that you had to make in the first part of your career? So in other words, yeah. what if you could have yeah. health and family, yeah. And some free time and fun. Yes. And create an incredible legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think, and you know, having, people up. having not, you know, thought terribly much about this and, and transparently being someone who's been quite, you know, um, in the moment, in the way that I plan my career, I haven't planned my career at all. It's, it's evolved in a way that I've really found very, very enjoyable. Um, and I hope I've contributed a bit through it. So for me, there is something also, I'm interested in what you were saying about tech um, and contributing in that space. I think there's something really important about communication, insight and communication is my thing, right? That will always be, I think, my thing. Communication mm. embedded with leadership, those two things coming together. So um, one of the things that I do see in, in technology is just the importance for people to be able to put their good ideas forward and have them understood. And, mm. and I think that's something that for technical people is, is a really, it can be quite a difficult thing to have happen. So that's something that I'm, I'm keen to contribute to. Mm. And within technology, I see that being even more important because the sorts of decisions that are made in technology, in some forms of technology, I'm meaning here, become it becomes a bit like coding morality in. So for example, you know, if you think about how the algorithm might work in a social media platform or, you know, how they're prioritizing what sorts of people they want to welcome onto their platform and how they're designing their system to keep their people safe and make sure that data is secure or people are secure or those sorts of things. I think there's something very appealing to be able to contribute to those decisions in a way that helps them be really well thought through and, mm. and you know, for real risks, which do very much exist in those sorts of environments, um, become, yeah. um, you know, contemplated and discussed in a way that's 
really constructive and and you know transparently from a moral moral framework so mm. I do see a role to play in that space and I do see um, you know such potential for an awful lot of people to learn some very basic skills that so many people particularly from technical backgrounds don't have so I'm really keen to contribute in that space that's not really a vision mm. but um, I do so, have so yeah, so let me, a bit yeah so let me, I might play yeah, there, so, but, uh, mm. Yeah, so again, these, these are, as I said, these are not answers to have. These are questions mm. to lean into, right? Mm. This is the point, right? So the, um, it's a question to sit with and to explore, right? And none of us, we have it overnight and none of us, you know, it's always, it's always changing. But I think mm. a vision is something that you see. I always say that a vision is something you see. And so to making it tangible, right, and not conceptual. So, yeah. um, you know, so the Ex-Quadrant Presidents Club is kind of, at least tangible because you can you can imagine a group mm. of high players yeah, in the room yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. the love revolution in tech one is is a little bit more conceptual right which mm. is why it's a little bit less powerful but it's still mm. directional listening directionally there mm. for me but i think mm. for you you know you might say well you know you know yeah is it a you know you could imagine um you know i'd love to found a um um you know tech you know, like, you know, Genius Engineer engineer Academy, you know, that, you know, all that takes um, um, you incredibly creative, underprivileged kids, right, and, mm. and helps them sell their idea, you know, get funded, for example, yeah. right, for their, for their yeah. projects. Or, or mm. I'm not saying that's the one it is, but you can yeah. you start to picture it. And you might at this stage have no idea how to do it. Mm. And mm. that's fine, right? Because mm. as... Um, um, somebody I know often says a goal is a place to come from not a place to get to in other words um, okay. in other words who do I have to be today to be the yeah. person that found the ex-quadrant presidents club yes I, I, right? do, I see what you mean yes yes and that's it, the power it, of a 25 year vision it changes mm-hmm. it changes where you who you are today it's not you don't, you don't, you're not making a promise to even achieve the vision right but you are making commitment to yourself to step up into the person to be the kind of person that could achieve that vision yes no i can see that no that's that's a really nice way to think of it and i think that takes the scare out of it as well to think well mm. you know i'm not locking myself into this thing that is such a you know can i even plan that far ahead yes. you know in my life which not yes, about a plan probably yeah, no exactly. so you know but to actually picture a possibility there of being for me you know in my oh golly do we say how old I would be you know I'd be living older than my mother lived so in 25 years time so you know what does that look like you know am I still you know working and, and contributing am I in paid employment or not and if I'm in paid employment, what does that mean? And employment for me means probably my own thing because that's the way it's been for a long mm-hmm. time. So, okay. So, you know, at that point in my life, will I still be, you know, vibrant and active and contributing to, you know, this, this, whatever mm. it is that well, I choose to be contributing to? And the point to? is, if, I hope so. And if you yeah. have a 25 year vision, you will, mm. you know, um, it helps you stay vibrant and active because you have a purpose, right? Absolutely, and, and I, absolutely. Mm. And I think that the point is, you're right. You don't, you know, if you if you if you can have a 17 step plan to get from A to B, it's probably not your 25 year vision, right? Because it's probably, <laughs> you know, it's probably you know, it's probably not big enough, right? It's it's, yes. it's not something that's going to inspire you enough. And so yeah. for me, that's what I would say is like, what would be incredible? Um, and then just sit with it and say, well, who would I have to be? Mm. Fine. So well, be, thank you be, for yeah, that. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. I think that's a really great question um, to, to focus on. So um, you, you, it sounds like you, you've covered off on the things that you want to cover off on for today. So perhaps we should tell people what we're focusing on next time. And the question that mm. Richard's got for us there is, what is the single biggest contribution you can make? And so before we head off there, have you got any final thoughts, Richard? Yeah, I guess we have a choice. Um, most of us, we live a life of reaction, 
right? We kind of respond to the situation around us, what's going on, and we kind of roll with it. But there's another way forward. And I think the CEO mentality, right, is to be, a, 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 is to be living a life of creation, right? Creating something that doesn't exist. And so you've got react or create, you know, reaction or creation. It's the same letters, in fact. <laughs> Isn't there anagrams of each other? Um, <laughs> nice. But... Um, but it's and it's a choice. And so for me, the 25 year vision question starts to get into what is it that you would love to create? What would you love to create in this world? Right? What is the legacy? What's the impact that you'd love to have, you know, beyond this current gig that you might be doing behind this current phase? Because then once you have that sense, everything else starts to uh be seen through that bigger that bigger lens yeah. and so yeah. even if it seems impossible that question of what is it that i would love to create over the next 25 years um i think is a is a really great question for everybody mm. to to wrestle with i agree no i've enjoyed just starting to think about that so Thank you for that. That was terrific. So everybody, if you'd like to see um, the notes or other episodes from this um, podcast, head over to xquadrant.com slash podcast and you'll see a whole lot of um, historical information there. And so until next time, thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Now let's talk about you. When you're in top leadership, when you're in the biggest role of your career, who supports you at a deep level? as you lead others, who helps you multiply your impact and get to the next level. If you're ready to learn more about our content, our coaching, and our community, then visit us at xquadrant.com.